Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on Point Set Topology Part 2, Module 28. This chapter consists of nets and filters. So, Module 28 will be on nets. Let me tell you a little bit background here. Recall that by a sequence in a set x we mean any function s with domain the natural numbers into x so why it is so different from the set theory of functions you know a sequence is just a function the the only speciality is that the natural numbers have a natural order in that okay which is actually a total order is actually more than that it is actually what well ordered set so that is the explanation that a sequence is more special than an ordinary function a very special well order set natural numbers which allows you to make so many uh, other mathematical statements beginning with uh, uh, the principle of mathematical induction right so there are many uses of sequences but the one which is most relevant to us in the con is the concept of convergence. <clears throat> the first thing that we notice here is the total order. We do not worry about the well order so much. The second thing is countability of n. Okay, that seems to play a major role. However, the well ordering of a as i told you is not at all important for the convergence of you know convergence theory of of uh, sequences and whatever the convergence property of a sequence is independent of its first few values okay to be very precise that is why i think that the well ordering is not all that important based on these observations we make the following definition wherein we want to enlarge the scope of this convergence theory okay <clears throat> so the enlargement or the generalization comes in the domain of the sequences okay so naturally once the domain is changed we don't want to call the old uh, name we want to change the name also by a direction on a set D, we mean a partial order just to distinguish from the standard partial order on the real numbers and natural numbers, we are going to use this, this uh, you know, LaTeX notation prick. You can just read it as followed rather than, you know, anything else greater than less than or equal to is ra rather a misleading terminology we are not comparing any quantitative thing here okay but partial order is a partial order anyway so this is a partial order with the following properties when somebody says partial order 
people already mean something okay it doesn't matter actually i will take a you know binary uh, uh, operation here okay that is just the meaning of that subset of d cross d satisfying the following properties a is always has an equity that is reflexivity once you have partial order you, i don't have to say this one but i am saying that because what i mean by here is is clearly i want to state it here a is less than equal to a for every a a less than equal to b less than equal to c implies a is less than equal to c that is transitivity then there is a third one which makes it a direction what is the direction okay so this is more important given any two elements a b inside d there is a third one which sits over both of them or you may say which follows both of them a is less than equal to c b is less than equal to c a and b are given there must be such a c if the relation like this satisfies a b c i will call it a direction okay a set together with a direction is called a directed set and is denoted by usually d comma break or d comma followed by d comma less than or equal to whichever one you want to read okay quite often as usual we will not mention this one when it is uh, understood we will say d is a directed set given any set x now i am going to come to the sequence part now sequence is generalized to the word net by a net in x we mean a function from directed set d to x that's all okay once again i want to have a word of caution about my terminology here you see in partial order people have to have the anti symmetry built in in our case if we assume anti symmetry no harm is done but the general definition of directed set okay does not make this assumption namely there is uh, anti symmetry a may be less than equal to b b is also less than equal to a yet a may not be equal to b that is allowed so such a generalization is not of much importance for us so if you don't want to bother you can assume anti symmetry no problem because all our examples are anti symmetric okay the general definition is necessary in uh, what are called as directed systems in the category theory now let us have some examples the set of natural numbers which was a motivating example is a directed set with the usual order it has many more other properties those things we have bit you know sideline now okay so a sequence is a net okay but now there will be many more nets than sequences so we shall study them first let us just concentrate on directed sets an important example of directed set for us in topology is any local base bx at a point x inside x x is a topological space there is a local base right with the usual inclusion of set inclusion relation defined by only the thing is i have to take usual yes but it is reverse so i would keep calling it reverse set inclusion a is less than or equal to b now implies for us and implied by b is a subset of a okay so people do use the uh, notation instead of this prick they will use the reverse prick okay there is absolutely no loss of generality at all on the other hand there will be other things which will collapse with this one okay 
if I use. You will see the next example. For these examples and many more examples, it, it would have been beneficial to denote a greater than or equal to b if and only if a contains b, right? That is all right, but that this much of uh, uh, I, sh I should say that by spending this much of time, uh, I have removed the, any confusion here. In particular, every local base is like this. Take the standard local base, namely set of all neighborhoods, which I will denote by this curly NX. Okay, all neighborhoods of a point X inside the topology. It will depend upon the topology, of course. That is a directed set with the same kind of reversed inclusion. Okay. We shall be using these directed sets in the SQL. These are important for us. Some more examples. An important example of directed set in topological spaces is the following. Start with any family C of closed subsets of X with the finite intersection property. What is finite intersection property? Intersection of any finitely many members of C must be non-empty. In particular, all members of C must be non-empty. Okay. Under the reversed inclusion, this may not be a directed set. So, we, we, we have opportunity to study this kind of uh, classes. So, we will not leave it like this, but we will make it into a directed set by consider the family D of all subsets which are intersections of finitely many members of C. Put all of them inside D. Okay, So, you have enlarged the family C to this family D. Or all members of C are, are there already, right? Because I can I can take just them intersection with itself is uh, <coughs> the same set. All those are there. Two of them are you take intersection may not be there. Put that one also like that. Finitely many uh, intersections should be put inside. Okay. Then D becomes a directed set under the reverse inclusion. Once you have two elements D1 and D2 which may not be comparable, you take D1 intersection D2 that will be smaller than both of them, okay? D1 intersection D2. So, the directed uh, condition 3 for direction is satisfied, okay? Yet another example is the family of all open coverings of a given topological space X with the relation, again okay, I am going to define this one, okay, this relation denoting the refinement relation. What is the meaning of refinement relation? Suppose U and V are open coverings, U is less than or equal to V, okay, would imply that, so here I have defined already. If u is u i, i belong to i and v is v j, j belong to j are two family subsets of. Then we say v is a refinement of u and we write u less than or equal to v. Okay, so refinements are coming far afterwards. Okay, each member of v will be contained in a member of u. So, there is a refinement function alpha from the indexing set of v namely j to the indexing set of u namely i such that v j is contained inside u of alpha j. Okay, so, this is the refinement relation. All right. Once you have two families like this, you can take u i intersection v j where i runs over i and j runs over j. This will be a common refinement. So, that is why this is a directed set. Right. So, notice that here neither u is contained inside v nor v is contained inside u. 
members of V are contained inside some members. Each member is contained some member. So that is the relation here, right? Okay. Another interesting example of a directed set, which is more or less the mother of all these, you know, the theories, is the Riemann integration theory. Comes in Riemann integration theory. How you start with a bounded function on a closed interval, and then you start cutting down the interval, the partitions. Then you are not satisfied with that. You take any two partitions, you want to a refinement of both of them, and that is precisely the notion of, you know, directed system. Okay, a refinement of of a partition. you know what it is because if it is a partition what is the refinement you put some extra points in between so that is a refinement so if you have two arbitrary partitions you can always get by inter, you know interlacing them the points of uh, one partition and another partition you get a refinement of both of them and so on right so for example suppose p is a partition like this we can define Okay, I am defining this S F from this one, the the sum here associated with F at P, and uh, at P means corresponding to the partition P. F is a function, bounded function, as A I minus A I minus one. This is the length of the interval, multiply by the value of the function at the midpoint of the interval. Take the sum. Okay. so such things are studied and then you go, go on refining these uh, partitions right and what i want to just tell you i can't go on doing uh, riemann theory here is riemann integration theory can be formulated uh, beneficially if you use the terminology of of directed sets directed sets and directed systems okay <coughs> so like this you can mention other things also from analysis which uh, you may not be familiar with but i will tell you what it is it's used very much in uh, uh, advanced topology as well as in uh, complex analysis it's called runge strick that is also similar only thing is this time you are dividing rectangles okay or domains inside c by rectangles smaller and smaller rectangles and so on so that is uh, famous known as runge strick you can use this to prove many things in uh, complex analysis okay <clears throat> so let us proceed with uh, certain notions of of uh, sequences which we use in the convergence theory and try to modify them or adopt them for the case of nets so here i am going to uh, you know introduce subnets eventual subsets and so on start with any directed set take a subset of d and then you want to tell what kind of subset you are taking so there is qualification so it will be called eventual subset if there is an a inside d such that a is less than equal to b would imply b is inside d prime okay so setting is eventual so there is one point everything following that point there is one point everything following that point all those points must be inside d prime so such a thing is called eventual subset eventual subsets inside now we can apply this one to nets also right in sequences also are the ones which will determine the limit property of the sequence after all this is what i i told you first few elements first few values of a sequence do not matter 
we are throwing away first few is precisely corresponds to this one. Now, there is no first few and so on here. So, you begin with some A and you are not worried about what happens before A. Only thing is everything after A must be inside D prime, such thing is called an eventual subset. Given a net S in X and a subset A of X, okay, S is a net means what? S is function from D to X now. Okay. We say S is eventually in A if S inverse A set of all points which come inside A under S, that is S inverse A, this is an eventual subset of the domain D of the function S. Okay. So, that is eventual set. Next, we say a net inside X where X is now a topological space. See, eventual set can be defined without reference to any topology. That is a part of the definition of net. Now, we are coming to convergence theory here. So, X must be a topological space. We say S converges to a point X inside X. If S is eventually in every neighborhood of X, that is what is the meaning of this one? In that case, we say X is a limit point of S. So, I will explain what is this one. This just means that given a neighborhood U, okay, S inverse U must be an eventual set, which is the same thing as saying given a neighborhood U, there exists an A inside D such that B is follow B is following A or you know, A is followed by B implies S B is inside U. Okay. So, that means that the C, the, the net converges to X. In that case, we say X is a limit of S. Okay. Now, we immediately come to a theorem here, which is a one point higher score than the, the sequences. Okay, for a sequence, you do not have such a theorem. Okay, so, what is it? Start with any topological space X. It is Hausdorff if and only if every net S in X has at most one limit. So, it does not converge to two different points of X. Okay. We know that in a Hausdorff space, a sequence has this property, but if every sequence has this property, we also know that we cannot say that the space is Hausdorff. The same thing here, we are saying that if this happens for every net inside X, then X must be Hausdorff. The only if part is similar to the case of sequences, so I will leave it to you to figure it out as an exercise. Now, I have come to if part. So, assume that X is not Hausdorff, then I will prove that this property does not hold. Okay. So, that is the same thing as proving property implies Hausdorff, not Hausdorff implies not this property. That is what. So, what is not, not this property means? There exists some net S which converges to at least two points. If I prove that, then I have finished the proof of this theorem. Okay. So, suppose X is not also. Then, there are two points X1 not equal to X2 in X such that every neighborhood U1 of X, U1 of X1 intersects every neighborhood U2 of X2. Okay, this is the negation of a Hausdorffness. Now, you look at the product set Nx1 cross Nx2 where Nx size are neighborhoods of set of all neighborhoods of X1. You see, if this one is a is a directed set, it is also a directed set, but what is the direction on the product I will have to define it. Okay. There are many ways of defining it. Okay.
okay so define this uh, direction on d as follows u1 comma u2 they are members of nx1 cross nx2 right is less than to v1 comma v2 if and only if if and only if this is a strict order u1 is less than equal to v1 and u2 is less than equal to v2 so u1 contains v1 and u2 contains v2 okay both of them should hold verify that this is a direction on t okay is it easy you can do that right why now define s from d to x by the rule s of any ordered pair u and u2 is an element of the intersection okay this is intersection intersection of any two members one from here one from here it is non empty is the assumption for x1 and x2 here okay every neighborhood u1 intersect every neighborhood u2 so u intersection u2 is non empty so i can pick up a point okay to define this function <laughs> you have to say we are using axiom of choice here okay we are using axiom of choice all the time anyway so let s then s is a net all right once d is a directed set function is defined s is a net this net i want to claim converges to both x1 and x2 okay it's very easy to see take any neighborhood ui of xi i equal to 1 and 2 we can select u1 comma u2 belonging to d which satisfies the property that if v1 v2 follows u1 u2 that means v1 is contained inside u1 and v2 is contained inside u2 then by the construction s of v1 v2 is an element of v1 intersection v2 which will be both inside ui i equal to 1 and 2 u1 and u2 are arbitrary i have found out s of v1 v2 so that it is inside ui for all of them which follow u1 u2 so s converges to both x1 as well as x2 okay in one go we have proved both of them all right in any case i want to recall this example which you must have seen in part 1 already take an uncountable set r like the real numbers itself with the co countable topology c o c co countable okay remember co countable topology means what a set is open if and only its complement is countable or of course m or it could be the whole space the empty set is also allowed now take a sequence actually s from n to r be a sequence which is convergent to a point r inside this this space okay put a equal to s of n minus r s of n is a countable set that's all throw away r from it that is also countable set then a is a countable set therefore r minus a is open but little r belongs to this r minus a right because a does not contain it so r minus a is a neighborhood of r now sn converges to r okay we start with a sequence converging to r this is what i said so this is the short notation for this s of n is sn sn converges to r there exist n not such that n is greater than or equal to n not implies sn belongs to r minus a which is a neighborhood of little r but sn intersection r minus a is just singleton r because everything other thing has been thrown away here is r minus a only r will survive that means sn is equal to r n greater than or equal to n not what is that, what is this means this means that the sequence is eventually a constant right 
Thus, we have proved that every convergent sequence in R with co-countable topology is eventually a constant. In particular, a sequence in R you know, with co-countable topology can have at most one limit, right? A sequential constant in the constant is the only limit, right? So, the property is satisfied. However, we also know that the co-countable topology on this uncountable set is not Hausdorff. Okay. Right? Any no, any two non-empty open sets will intersect. Okay. So, this is one uh, little a small surprise for you or justification for doing something general than sequences. Okay. So, we will have many such things. So, next one yet another aspect in which nets fare better than sequences is the following result. Recall that we have defined a space to be sequential if its topology can be determined by convergent sequences in it. Right. So, sequences have this property uh, while studying uh, you know matrix space and so on. In this case, in the case of nets, if you try to do that, you will get all the topological spaces. So, so it just washes out the whole thing. Okay. So, that is what I want to say. That means what? the sequences will determine the topology completely. How? So, it is what here, with this theorem. Let x be any topological space and a be a subset of x. Okay. Take non-empty subset, if a is empty set then there, uh, there will not be any statement. Then a is open if and only if every net s in x which converges to a point in A is eventually inside A. Okay. So, that is characterization of an open subset other than non empty set, right? Other than empty set. Characterizing all open sets means its topology is defined completely determined by the behavior of the sequences, the behavior of the nets in X. So, this is a theorem which is not at all <laughs> difficult to prove. By the definition of convergence of a net, the only if part is clear, eventually it should be inside A, that part is clear. We need to prove the if part. Suppose A is not an open set. Okay. This means that there exists a point x inside A such that A does not contain any neighborhood of x because if it contains neighborhood it will be in the interior right so every point is in the interior the a is open so there is at least one point which satisfies this property namely no neighborhood of this point x is contained inside a all right now look at any local base bx you can take the whole of Nx if you like, but just local base is enough. Sometimes you can verify this to only local basis. That is why I am using local base also. Local base Bx at x, okay. As in the example which we have studied all day, local bases are directed sets. For each B inside Bx, choose Sb to be a point inside B intersection complement of C, complement of A because a complement is uh, you know uh, this neighborhood b intersection a complement is non empty that's what we know it is not contained inside a right so b intersection a complement is non empty i can choose a point once again this is uh, this is the definition of s uses axiom of choice but it follows just as before that s converges to x but it is never inside A. No point of no point of this sequence is inside A. Forget about eventuality. All right. 
so we have seen that convergence of nets determines the topology so this is powerful suddenly okay so we will see its power a few more uh, properties of this convergence theory we will study once again there are topological spaces x with subsets a such that every sequence which converges to a converges to a point in a is eventually in a yet a is not open okay i will not uh, give you specific example here but it is already there whatever you have seen today so just find it out let here is an exercise let d prime be an eventual subset of a directed set show that d prime and the same partial ordering same direction restricted to the t prime okay is a direction on t prime so this becomes a directed set so this is something non trivial have to show it is not difficult further take any sequence any net on d so the so net s from d to x inside x suppose you take a, a see first part was only about the eventual subset inside the directed set now you take a net okay defined on d inside x suppose it converges to x belonging to x then the 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 sub is this is restricted the sequence restricted net that converges and conversely it is different on f so this is also not difficult figure it out once you do that you will be familiar with the definition of convergence definition of eventual set and so on okay so let us stop here next time we will study little more properties of nets thank you